Hello my friends, what's up? MRI spectroscopy? Let's dive into that. Let's go. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in on my channel. For those who are new, my name is back again. I'm an MRI radiographer. In my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced MRI topics, tutorials, and thanks for those already subscribing my channel and for those who are new considering doing so after request from from uh, my viewers from you guys i'm very happy that uh, i'm here today bringing you mri spectroscopy spectroscopy is a difficult topic me myself i find it's very difficult so i'm trying to break it down as easy as possible to show you guys how you can perform this along with the post processing and along with the pitfalls and a little bit tips and tricks in the end of this video I found a few paper which uh, can be a great benefit for understanding more about the spectroscopy. You know, the different maps you will get, the different peaks, the different metabolites you will get. These papers, I think it will be valuable for you because uh, when we talk about the spectroscopy, we have something which is a very high TE, a little bit lower TE. What's the difference? What kind of metabolite you will get whenever using this TE and that TE? And what kind of pathology we will expect it to get? So I really recommend you to check those links and I will leave the links in the description down below. I know many of you guys already do a lot of spectroscopy and uh, there are many ways to do this. There are a lot of pitfalls as well. So I'm going to, just going to show you today how I perform this without further ado. So let's go to the scan and I will show you. All right, so we are at the 1.5 Tesla and uh, we are using a standard head neck uh, 20 channel coil and we are using an E11E software. So in front of you here now we have of course this brain and uh, I just did a localizer. I'm just going to do a fast T2 turbo spinnacle just to have uh, some kind of a localizer. It's easy for you to understand. Also easy for me to do the positioning. I'm just going to run this one. Just a fast one around one minute or so. And look at that. The thing about spectroscopy is that it cannot uh, be combined with images which is distortion corrections on either it's 2d or 3d so it need to be off but do not worry uh, you can run the sequence with the distortion on if you the whole protocol is set up like that because we can uh, have a work around later and turn that off and use those images to to get the references so inside uh, the dot cockpit right here if you already have purchased uh, the spectroscopy and have it available, you will find it in the Siemens tree and lower a little bit down here. Down there, you will find spectroscopy and you have multiple types of spectroscopy sequences here. We're just gonna do a Siemens standard one just to show you how you can perform this. So we're gonna, uh, as you can see here, you have SVS, the single voxel and CSI that's uh, multiple voxel so we're going to do that first I'm just going to choose the one with 135 and along with that I'm going to go for single voxel also 135 just to show you how we can position this spectroscopy so the T2 is done right there so before we continue take a closer look at this T2 I already marked this image right here this window so that's the window I want it to be undistorted so I can use it as a reference image so I can position on it, okay? So let's open it now. You see you get a, some kind of a blink and there you go. It automatically makes an undistorted image for you. So you suddenly you have two T2 weighted right here which is exactly the same. The only difference is um, one of them is no distortion and D, no distortion. The other one is 2D distortion, which is the original one, right? Because you did have distortion on and it automatically makes you, makes for you the uh, no distortion. So you can use it as a reference lines. So if you have more images you want to use in a sagittal plane or coronal plane, drag it up here, mark it, and then just open the spectroscopy. It will automatically give you the dis undistorted images. Okay, so uh, let's open the spectroscopy. So let's choose a plane. I, I want to choose this plane right here. So I just right click and copy image position right there. Copy image position. 
and I'm just gonna try to position it. So I'm gonna in purpose make this a little bit big so we will get a lot of noise in the in the some of the voxels just to show you. So if you have a tumor or something, it's important that you you um, make this smaller as small as possible and not, do not have interference on the, the fluid and on the bones on the air because that would cause bad results. So another thing I'm just gonna mention to you here, inside the system adjustments, this is all ticked on directly from the semen screen. So it's a purpose on that and confirm frequency adjustments. It will, after the shimming, you will get this uh, frequency adjustment to confirm it. So I'm gonna show you now. Okay, the sequence is shimming right now. There you go. So you get this um, confirmed frequency adjustment, right? Just to see if you are getting the right peaks. So if you do like this, you right click here, zoom in 20, zoom in 20 like that. You will see they're a little bit out of range right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover my mouse over there. I'm just gonna click it. And then I apply and then I continue. But I'm not sure if this spectroscopy will be good enough because it's too big and it's the fluid inside and it's, it's touching bones. But just going to show you how this can be done. And we're going to go for a single voxel right now. We're going to choose a slice where we want to put this single voxel. Let's choose it up here where there is no fluid or bones, only brain tissue right there. And we go into the system adjustment and still directly from the Siemens. Confirm adjustment as well here. So I get this confirm adjustment. I right click, I zoom 20. It seems okay. So I just continue that one. Whenever these two sequences are done, I will show you the post processing. So let's move on to the post processing part. So you open your browser, mark your sequence. So we're going to do uh, multivox first, CSI. And this is directly from a scanner. So the application, you have what we call spectroscopy, application of spectroscopy. Just push that one. And it will open the application of spectroscopy. So in here, you have, uh, you need to open the protocols. This presets right here. There's a lot of presets here, which S stands for Siemens, C stands for customers. So we made a lot of tests here, you know, you can see that. So we're gonna choose this exactly same TE and uh, the same sequence as we just ran, CSI spin echo 135. Okay, open that one. So as you can see the voxel here, it's not good at all, it's a lot of noise. So I can push around here and check the different one. This one seems okay, this one. So you can see the peak is upwards. So it's a sign that it's all good, no pathology. If, however, the peak go downwards, it could be some pathology there, a sign of pathology. It's just something to keep in mind. And you can see there's a lot of bad boxes here. It's because I made it really big and I had a bad shimming. So the shimming is extremely important. And um, just to show you how it can, it can be done, and if you want to save the different voxel, you just push this button right here. And here you can select results, spectrum, and three reference images. And you just push OK on each of those voxels you want to, to have. And you can also do a metabolite image right here. I just push that button right there. So you have the option here to choose between the ratio of metabolites, peak in format, so let's try something here. Let's try Julien or Anne. I just push a button to show you now. Let me push OK. You will see there is very bad. Our, our spectroscopy is this hole here, and you only get a few information right there. It's not good at all. So let's go inside here again, and let's change the intensity range to a little bit lower. Let's choose 5. It seems a little bit better, but still missing. Let's choose zero. 
so I get all the information right there so you have the peak info right here so this, this is like an overview right so you can also save this one if you want to save data and the same here spectrum and three references images so in the browser you have those images you just save right here this is one the voxels I just saved and the reference images and this is the metabolite image I just saved as well so you can send it all to packs so let's close this data set and let's check out the single voxel let me go in here spectroscopy so the first sign here is the, the, the curve looks great but let's open the, the preset the protocols so I'm gonna find the right protocol for that one so I can see it right there open that one so it's also just one box on there so we can save it and as you can see it's normal it's going upwards Whenever you go downwards, it could lead to pathology. Let me save that one as well. So whenever you open the browser, it will be there for you to just send it over to PAX. Okay, before we end this video, there's just something I want to show you here. It's a tips where I got from my colleagues, which uh, is a helpful tips actually. This is the part where we did the CSI, which is multi spectroscopy. And this is the single voxel spectroscopy. So let's take a look at the multi first. So whenever this confirmed frequency adjustment pops up, you can have a view right here, FWHM Hertz 51.2. So as long as this number is as low as possible, you will have a better chance to have good images. So if it's too high, uh, I really recommend you to do a reshim or do a repositioning just to try to get it as low as possible. As, as you can see the spectroscopy I put on right here is very big like I mentioned it's touching uh, the fluid, the bones, the air so it's a lot of interference going on there and you can also use saturation bands around this spectroscopy and one more thing I want to mention let's say you have a tumor right here so I really recommend you not to put the outer lines the outer boundaries direct on the tumor so let's move uh, a few voxels inside here so you have a tumor a little bit further away from the outer boundaries. Uh, also from experience, we get a better uh, spectroscopy. Let's take a look at this single box right here. The FWHM, the number here is low, 9.2 compared to 51.2. So where's the limit of the number on the 1.5 Tesla or 3P? To be honest, I'm not really sure. Uh, I heard that it's around 13 or so on the 1.5, it should be okay. So this number is low, lower than 13, so it should be okay. And that's why I also think that we got a curve like this, which is good. Not much noise and uh, good. Uh, one thing I want to mention uh, before we stop is because if you have a small tumor and you have a single voxel, which is extremely big, like this one, if the tumor is just a small one inside, so be very careful with that and rather make the box a little bit smaller because if you have a small tumor right here, you have a tumor tissue and then you also have a normal brain tissue, same box, so it will be interference. So just be care careful of that. And also whenever you do a spectroscopy, do it and look it in different planes as well. Because if you look at the coronal plane, you can also angulate it on a coronal and sagittal. Do not only rely on one plane because the box is big, right? It's not a small one on one size, but it's also big. Just an example, if you look at this point right here, and if I do it like this, you see it's much bigger, right? So it's the same here. So just be careful with the spectroscopy. Well, that's it, guys. Spectroscopy is a difficult topic. However, I hope this video can be helpful for you. And I really recommend you to check the links where I put in the description down below. Where they will be very helpful to read a little bit of literature about this. Today, I only show you how you can, can do this directly at the scanner and the post-processing part. So at our work, we do uh, spectroscopy and we do uh, the post-processing, but the radiologists do the rest of the part, right? They read it and they do further post-processing if needed. And it's also available post-processing in a single via if you have the possibilities to do so. In single via, there will be more possibilities to take this a step further when it comes to the post-processing. So before we close up, I do have a question for you. Are you doing spectroscopy differently from what I just showed you? If so, please let me know in the comment section down below. 
So if you like this video, do not forget to push the like button and hit the subscribe, hit on the notification bell. So whenever you get a new video from me, you will get a ding ding. Even though a lot of people got vaccinated now, still be careful and take care of each other. So until the next time I catch up with you, thanks for staying in the far end of my video and thanks for the support so far. I see you on my next video. Peace out.